Michelangelo was generally acknowledged to be the greatest artist of his generation when he died in 1564 at the age of 89. But because he'd never bothered to make out a proper will, the local magistrate was forced to send a team of accountants into his home to make a final tally of his possessions. Though the house was only sparsely furnished, they eventually found a hoard of 8,289 gold coins. A small fortune at the time, but as it turned out, only a fraction of his total holdings. Michelangelo loved to claim poverty when friends or family would ask for loans. But the truth is, at the time of his death, he was one of the wealthiest men in all of Italy. Four centuries later, Pablo Picasso, also generally acknowledged to be the greatest artist of his generation, left behind an estate valued at $100 million when he died. I know it's not a competition, but just 24 years later, Andy Warhol left behind twice that much. The public loves to hold on to the idea of artists as tortured geniuses toiling away in obscurity and poverty. But honestly, when you take a look at history, it's hard not to acknowledge that the very best artists invariably die rich. Very, very rich.